Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 21. So yesterday I spent a little bit of time introducing you to the custom stages that are available within the phases of our three opportunity pipelines. Today we're actually going to start the process of building an opportunity such that I can then showcase the remaining features inside of our opportunities applet, including client updates, document management, and commission management. So let's dive back into the opportunities applet and we get our pipeline view from this screen as we always do and to create a brand new opportunity we can do this from multiple spaces we obviously see the big teal button inside of our pipeline view we could also choose to enter an actual phase of business and we would still have that create opportunity button here at the top right in fact if we're in a specific contact that we want to start an opportunity from we also have that button inside the Opportunities tab. We can create an opportunity here. So three different places where you can create that opportunity. I'm going to come back to our main home screen and choose to create the opportunity from here. When I click on Create Opportunity, you're going to see at the top, it's going to indicate which market center I'm currently with. If I only have one market center, then that's a pretty simple solution. If I have a team, then I would make sure I want to select the team. Right now, this demo account is not tied to any team. Next up, you have your opportunity type. This is very important that you pay attention to. If for any reason you create a listing opportunity and close it out, meaning you actually create it and then realize it should have been a buyer opportunity, there is no toggle or easy switch to move that from a listing opportunity to a buyer opportunity. You would actually need to delete the listing opportunity and start back over. So slow down at this moment, make sure that we're creating the correct opportunity at the correct time for the correct use case. In this sense, I'm gonna go ahead and choose listing as the opportunity type. Next up, we've got the client involved. So who is that client? Let's choose Marge Simpson. So you can see we've got our fictional character, Marge Simpson here as our client. And then we have a co-seller. So is there a co-seller involved with Marge? Does Marge have a partner, a husband, a child, a parent? Are they buying the house with anyone else? In this case, Marge is actually gonna buy this house with Homer Simpson. Now, if I search for Homer Simpson, you can see we actually don't have a contact that's been created for Homer. So from the opportunity applet, I can actually add a new contact and you can see it's going to ask for the co-seller email address and phone number and tells me that a new contact will be created. Now to be clear, this contact is only going to have a name, an email and a phone number. So we are going to want to go back and make sure that we fill in any additional missing information. But let's go ahead and put Homer's fake email in. That's doe at gfail.com. And we don't have a phone number for Homer right now, so we're going to leave that blank. We do have his fake email address, though, so we'll move forward from there. Now, when it comes time for your opportunity name on the listing side, double check with your market center. Most market centers that I know, they prefer that the address be listed first. But again, just double check with your local leadership as to how they want to see the opportunity named. So this could be 123 Main Street. And this is, uh, where did the Simpsons live? Springfield, Missouri, and Marge Simpson. I'm gonna go ahead and put Marge Simpson. And since Marge has a co-seller, I'm gonna list that name as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. It, it is a listing opportunity name. We also have the ability to have tags for our opportunities. This is a great way to filter opportunities. We'll talk about that a little bit when we come back to the All Opportunities tab. When does this listing anticipate to close? This isn't a required field, so if you don't really have a good idea, you can choose to leave it blank. But if you have an idea time frame wise of how long it might take to sell, you can always choose to enter that time frame as well. Next up, if you have the estimated list price, this is important to put in because it's going to play into our potential versus probable income in just a moment. So we're going to go ahead and put in the estimated list price is 400,000. Then we're going to put in the commission rate that we are charging 
to Marge and Homer. Now this would be only for our side. We know commissions are negotiable, so you can put in whatever commission rate that you actually negotiated. I'm just gonna put in, let's say it was 2.5%. Uh, opportunity phase and stage. Where do you want this opportunity to actually be built out? So let's say in this case, I'm still working to earn the right to work with them. We haven't even had a full appointment, but I know when the time comes, they're gonna work with me, right? So we could leave it in Cultivate. They're tidying up a few things at the house. They said they'll call me next month. I'm gonna put that in one to three months, and I'm gonna go ahead and create that opportunity. Now, when I do, the opportunity itself actually opens up and we've got six tabs along the top. We can see the contacts associated with this actual opportunity. We have the ability to connect an actual listing from the MLS to this opportunity. We've got some additional client update items, our tasks from our checklist yesterday. It's a whole lot of information that we're going to continue to dive into but I did wanna take you back to the pipeline to show you what the opportunity card looks like in the stage that we dropped it in. Now we dropped it into the one to three month stage of our cultivate phase of our listing pipeline. And because we listed what our commission percentage was and what the potential list price was, you can see that it actually estimates our actual commission paid. Now, if we come back to the pipeline view, we can see that now in the pipeline view, the volume shows 400,000. And then on the far right-hand side, we have potential income and probable income. Well, why is potential income $10,000, but the probable income is only $500? That's such a big gap. Well, remember, at 2.5% of a $400,000 sales price, the potential income that an agent might make would be $10,000 if this transaction closes. Obviously, that would be gross commission or GCI. The probable income, though, is based upon the fact that you have a 5% chance of closing this deal when it's in this particular stage. Remember, we built that out yesterday. So that's why it's only $500. You'll notice if we click, we're going to hold down our mouse and we're going to drag this opportunity card to the less than 30 days. Now we're getting a little bit closer to the appointment. We've decided that that's a 10% conversion rate. So when we come back to our pipeline, you can see now our probable income has increased to $1,000 or 10% of our potential. This tool is really important when making our business decisions, especially as your pipeline gets fuller and fuller. We certainly don't wanna count every, what is it, chicken until the egg is hatched probably the right way to say that, right? You don't want to make decision, business decisions based upon if everything closes because oftentimes things don't close, right? We don't get the deal. The appointment doesn't go well. We don't get them under contract. They expire. We get them under contract and then something falls out and everything hits the fan. And we've all seen those opportunities that we thought were going to close, ultimately not close. So that's why this potential versus probable tool is really important. And it's also important, again, that you come through each one of your phases and the stages within them and take a look at what those actual percentages are and consider making changes to them. That's it for today, guys. The very simple process of creating an actual opportunity and what that opportunity looks like within your pipeline phases and stages. A little bit of a throwback to our commission percentages as far as the potential versus probable. Tomorrow, we're going to start diving in further into all of the tabs available within our opportunity on the way towards actual compliance and commissions as well. So stay tuned for that. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. And as always, I look forward to speaking to you again real soon.